assembly. Oh, yeah. Yeah.
church of God. Amen. Y'all stand up and worship with us this morning. Yeah. 
hands are forgiven. Oh, yes, they are. Oh, I've been washed by the blood. Oh, we got to do that one more time. Oh, my hope is in Jesus. Think about it, church. Thank God my yesterday is gone. Oh, they're all gone. Oh, my sins are forgiven. Oh, yes, they are. Oh, I've been washed by the blood. Oh, give the Lord the glory. Hallelujah. Shout out. Transformed by the power of Jesus Christ. Well, there it is. Praise the Lord. Let me say it's good to see you. Thank you, Mike. Good to see you in the house of the Lord. We've got a lot to pray about today. I want us to continue to remember Brother and Sister Bell. Uh, Ernest and Phyllis today, they are in uh, need of prayer. And then Brother Wood, Brother Wood, I sure miss Brother and Sister Wood today. Uh, he ended up in the hospital on Friday, I believe it was, and with emergency surgery. And uh, so he is still in the hospital. I want us to continue to remember him. He was off a week when I was with him, but I want us to remember uh, he and Sister Wood in prayer today that God will continue to touch him today. I sure miss them. Yeah. Got some out of town today. You know, it's summer and uh, rightfully so. So I want us to pray that God's traveling mercies will be upon them. Amen today. Anybody else? Hallelujah. Yes. Uh, I, I just want the church to pray for my brother. He got COVID. Yes. Yeah, just pray for him that God will give him strength and help him. Amen. Let's pray for Brother Dale's brother today. Yes, anybody else? Hallelujah. Yes. Let's do that. Yes, let's do that today. Amen. Amen. Anybody else? Amen. Amen. How many have an unspoken request today? Amen. Let's go to the Lord in prayer today. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we stand before you today. Father, Lord, we do as the scripture has said, Lord, we brought our request and our petitions and we're letting them be made known unto you today. And I ask you, Lord, to meet every need. I ask you, Lord, to touch every request today by the power of the Holy Spirit and the shed blood of Jesus Christ. I ask you, Lord, to meet every need in this place. Lord, whether it's a physical healing or a spiritual touch or a financial miracle, God, or maybe, Lord, emotionally, God, Lord, be, be, you know, people have been drained emotionally. I ask you, Lord, to touch them as well. And God, Lord, we know that there is nothing impossible with you, for with you all things are possible. And God, we just stand upon your word that says, Lord, that you are enough, that you are our healer, you are our supplier, Lord. And Lord, even the word says that you are more than enough. And I ask you, Lord, that Lord touch those today that's traveling, God. Lord, as it's still in the summer months, Lord, just give them traveling mercies today, Heavenly Father. And Lord, I ask you, Lord, our lost loved ones, God, family, friends, Lord, people that we love and appreciate, God. Lord, and may know, Lord, I ask you, Lord, to reach down. Lord, that you will touch them by your mighty hand, Father. Lord, that the convicting power of the Holy Spirit, Lord, will flow through their life. God and Lord, they will make things right with you and repent before it's too late. I ask you to minister unto every need. Lord, touch the rest of this service. I ask you, Lord, to anoint everything, Lord, that's done for you. But Lord, most of all, that we may lift you up. Hallelujah. Lord, you said, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto me. We can't do it, Lord Jesus, but you can. And I ask you to anoint us and to minister unto us today. And we're going to give you the glory and the praise and the honor in Jesus' wonderful, wonderful name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I want our children to come and give their offering today. Praise the Lord.
Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Who did you ask to be there ready? I want our ushers to come. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Give us unto the Lord. Amen. I appreciate all you do because you help make ministry here possible. And I appreciate you today. Amen. Brother Carol, will you lead us to the Lord in prayer? Lord, thank you again for this opportunity to get us to come to your house. We thank you, Lord, for your love and mercy. Thank you, Lord, for this church. Thank you, Lord, for all the people. We ask you, Lord, just to have your way today. Lord, open us up. And Lord, just do the work that you want to do in us. Lord, bless this offering, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for all that you're going to do. Of course, in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. amen.
to me. Telling people it's the beach, I've refrained from that. I'm going to the coast. <laughs> and uh, we normally go every year. This has been an unusual year. I went had celebrated 25 years of being married to my wife. I can't believe I put up with her that long. Just kidding. 25 years. Amen. So we went to Florida for that last week. I was in San Antonio, Texas. He said, yeah, it must have been nice. I said, yeah, I was in meetings all day. <laughs> Amen. 
discussing who knows what. <laughs> Amen. I tell you, it was not the same city I was in in 2008. It's changed a lot. And so this week we're going to the beach with the kids, and God is good. How many would agree with me that God is good? Is He good to you? Do you have a lot to praise Him for? So I'm going to be at the beach this week. Um, and Brother Willie, we're not having service tonight. So I'm cutting you some slack tonight. But then Wednesday night, we're going to have it. I thought I will. I don't know what I'm going to do because we've been on this subject of the excellent spirit or the spirit of excellence. And uh, so nobody has that material but me. So he's going to just preach. Is that all right? Amen. So we're going to have midweek service, 6 o'clock. And Brother Willie's going to be preaching. Praise uh, the Lord. I tell you, I wish some of you would at least smile. You look like you're about half the press. Amen. Isn't it wonderful? You're not to smile. Amen. Praise the Lord. You look a lot better when you smile. It's good to have um, Bishop Matt Gunner uh, and our colleagues on the evangelism board for Western North Carolina. And uh, it's a pleasure to work with him. He and his family, and God is good. God is blessing the state. He's doing a fantastic job. And so I had asked him, I guess probably a couple of months ago now, it's been a while, to preach uh, for me. And uh, he done such a tremendous job. We had a wonderful time the last time he was here. And I wanted him to come back. So I want you to welcome Bishop Gunner, if you will. Come on, Bishop. Somebody say praise the Lord this morning. Praise praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And we're truly privileged to be here with you today to uh, be in service and to be able to bring forth the word of the Lord. And uh, I've got some folks that are friends of mine slipping in here in service with us this morning. Amen. What a privilege and a pleasure it is to be in the house of the Lord. And uh, I can't say enough about your pastor and the work that he does for the kingdom of God. The stuff that you don't see that's behind the scenes is probably uh, what needs to be talked about more than what you see. And so I just want to let you know that pastors do work. Uh, <clears throat> real pastors do. And uh, they deserve a vacation. So I honor him. And I appreciate him taking time with his family. Yes. And you as a church uh, affording him the opportunity to be able to go and to still be a part of the church, you know. Uh, some people, whenever the pastor's gone, the church falls apart, it seems like. And pastors don't want to leave. But thank you for being a church that gives your pastor the opportunity to go. And I will testify with him. We were in meetings all week last week. Um, I'm not sure that I saw much of the city except whenever I went out to eat lunch. I did swing by the Alamo and say, hey. Uh, but besides that, we, uh, we pretty much were in meetings constantly. But um, thank you for what you do as the Church of God here in King. Yes. Thank you for what yes. you do as the fellowship of believers here in this area. And uh, God has put you here for a purpose. Amen. We have to sometimes remind ourselves that we are here for a purpose. We're not here just to occupy space. We're not here just to be the owners of property. But we're here for a purpose. And God has a divine purpose for you. God has a divine purpose for your pastor here in this community. And we celebrate with you today all that God is doing. And uh, I appreciate so much. It is truly a privilege to be here today and to be a part of this service. Uh, we love you. We love the church of God. And uh, we're so thankful that we can serve the Lord alongside of you and see God's goodness take place in our lives. Amen? Amen. Amen. Um, I do want to just uh, mention to you, uh, I have my lovely wife here with me this morning. She is a blessing to me in the ministry. Couldn't do it without her. And I thank God for her. And uh, have some dear friends, their family to us that are here. And they thought that the service started at 11. So they come in for the preaching. And uh, they... Uh, they say the best part. Amen. Amen. 
to me, there's nothing greater than the word of the Lord. Right. I love to sing. I love to worship. You guys did a great job this morning. But there's just something about the Word of God. That's it. Man, whenever the songs are gone, you can't remember them. The Word. The Word. You can stand on the Word. You can stop writing songs. But the Word is forever settled. Amen? And so we don't base what we do off of off of feelings. We don't base what we do off of community of faith. We base what we do off of the Word of God. Amen. And so it's imperative that we have the Word preached to us, that we instill the Word in our life, and that we become the Word, that we begin to live out the Word in our life, because that's how people see Jesus, Amen. is whenever they see people that are living the Word of God. Amen. There's a lot of people professing their knowledge of Christ and their relationship with Christ, a lot of people are attending church this morning, but tomorrow they'll tell a different story by the way that they talk, by the way that they live, by the neighbors that they upset. Come on, somebody. Amen. But whenever we live the Word of God, we'll love our neighbor greater than ourselves. We'll see ministry as a priority more than just a mundane thing to do. We'll see religion pass away in relationship with Christ be the priority. So I'm thankful for the Word of God today. If you have your Bibles, turn with us to the book of Hebrews. The book of Hebrews, chapter 13, and yes. verse 8. If you guys could come help me sing a song at the end, God's unchanging him. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Hallelujah. A very simple verse that I want to preach from today. More scripture that we'll give you throughout this message. Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 8. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday and today and forever. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday and and today and forever. I want to preach this morning on this thought, an unchanging Christ. An unchanging Christ. Would you pray with us, Father? We love you. Thank you for the opportunity that we have to be in your house this morning. I thank you for every individual that is here. God, I thank you, Lord, for their gifts and their talents, the abilities that you put inside of them to work for your kingdom. Thank you again for this pastor and the opportunity to stand where he would normally stand this morning. But God, to deliver the word, I thank you for this opportunity this morning. Thank you for the music that we've had. Thank you for the worship, the expression of our heart towards you and the gratitude that we give in that. We thank you, Lord, that now we come to this time and we pray your anointing upon your word. Anoint me, God, to preach everything that you would have said. Nothing more, nothing less. And we'll give you praise for it in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Change. Change can be viewed in two different ways. Change can be viewed as a good thing, and sometimes it's a bad thing. Change, whenever it comes to life, many times is a good thing. Now, for those of us that are getting older, we don't like the changes that take place. But they are necessary changes that must happen. You see, <clears throat> change wasn't even an issue in the garden because they were designed to live. But because of sin, change became a necessary thing. Change happens. Change takes place. And most of the time we can deal with change whenever we know what the change is. Yes. Amen. Change, oftentimes, whenever it's brought to us, is a difference of a way of life. It's a difference of the norm of what typically takes place in our life. Change is good if you take a better job. Come on. That's it. That's it. That's it. Yeah. But on the other hand, whenever it's not God's will for you to take that job, it can be the most miserable change you've ever experienced. That's it. You see, life offers us change. We 
And my wife and I are getting ready to experience a change in November. A change that is going to excite our life. We've got a grandbaby coming. It's our first. Amen. And I'm excited. If you're not a grandparent, I pray that God helps you to experience it because I'm so looking forward to this change. There's going to be some changes. It's not going to be the same like, like raising your own kids because we can spoil these to death and send them home. Amen. That's a positive change. It's good. It's exciting. <clears throat> However, on the other hand, there are some changes that we don't look forward to. Since the last time I was with you in, in November of last year, there were some changes hit my life. The doctors looked at my blood work and said, something's wrong. And just a few days later, I was diagnosed with colon cancer. We don't like those kinds of changes. That's it. But even in the midst of that kind of a change, God can do something great. And God can do something wonderful. I'm here to testify to you that through the chemo treatments that I've taken, I just finished up my 11th and I'll finish my 12th in uh, two weeks. And I'm going to celebrate. I'm going to ring that bell and I'm going to give God the glory because He's brought me through. He's helped me. He's ministered through. But sometimes we don't like that kind of a change. But it's through that change that God begins to do great things. God begins to work. Change can be good. Change can be bad. We're living in a world that is rapidly changing. And I have to testify this morning, it's not for the good. We're living in a world that is becoming more and more pluralistic in the way that they think about God. We're, we're entering into a season that we've never thought that we would see that we're facing things in our world, changes that are so rapidly happening that we find ourselves grieving and in sorrow because we, we see the things happen just recently in our city in Asheboro. They voted to do this, do this open container where you can go out into the city streets and there's a social district. And in that social district, you can go and you can, you can drink openly on the sidewalks. You can go anywhere in the city in that social district and drink openly. And our city council said this is going to be a good change. It's going to be a great change for our community because it will bring more people downtown. <clears throat> I don't understand that rationale. Nevertheless, the changes that we have seen is that we have just recently had two drag queens come to town and perform since they passed this. We now have a Wiccan store that is opened up downtown. If you're not familiar with what Wicca is, it's witchcraft. Right. Changes that are happening around us that we say these should not be. But the world says that it's better for us to do this kind of thing than to follow Christ. Change can cause uncertainty in our lives and we live with uncertainty constantly in this day and age that we live in. We don't know if we're going to wake up tomorrow morning and hear the news that there's another war that started. We don't know if we're going to wake up in the morning and there be food on our shelves. Come on, this is where we're at. <laughs> we're living in a time where change is taking place around us and it's causing us to be unsettled and uneasy. And for us to be a body of believers that's uneasy. It speaks to a world that says that we're not sure about our anger and our hope. But I've come by to preach to you today that whether you view change as good or whether you view it as bad and whether you look at this world and say it's going to hell or whether you look at this world and say that there is still hope. I'm here today to tell you that the God that we serve, the Christ that saved us from our sins, has not changed and will not change. But the Bible says that He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Can somebody give Him praise? It does not take away from the fact that the world is trying to change Him. 
that the world is trying to trying to uh, bring him down to humanity. It doesn't change the fact that the world is trying to manipulate who God is. But I want to tell you that whenever the scripture says that he is the same today and tomorrow and forever, I want to tell you that God has always been and God will always be. And there's not a society, there's not a government, there's not a person, there's not a church that can change him. He is Christ. He is God. And God will never change. You see, the wisdom of God, the wisdom of Christ has never changed. He is the wisdom of God according to 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 24. But unto them which are called both Jews and Greeks, Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God. He is filled with wisdom. From his youth he was full of wisdom. Listen to what the Bible says in Luke 2 and 40. And the child grew and waxed strong in the spirit filled with wisdom and the grace of God was upon him. We look into the Bible in Matthew chapter 13 and we see that where he's in the synagogue and he's laying down the law in front of the lawgivers. He's laying down the word in front of the word givers and he's telling them the things that they need to hear all because he is the wisdom of God and God's wisdom has never changed. If you want to know what to do tomorrow, trust in the word of the Lord. Lean not to your own understanding. But in all thy ways acknowledge him. And he will direct thy paths. The wisdom of God has not changed. The holiness of God has not changed. Christ is never changing in his holiness. Listen to me. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 5 and 21. He knew no sin. No sir. Christ is an illustration of God before humanity. He was sent as the only begotten Son so that men could see a living illustration of a mighty and powerful God. Now we know that there is God the Father, God the Son, and God the Spirit. But whenever we speak of Christ, we're speaking just as much of the Father as we are of the Spirit. Come on, somebody. We're talking about God. We're talking about the triune Godhead. When we talk about Christ, we are talking about the Son of the living God that came to this earth to be the example for us to understand what God was and to see God. He came to this earth and did mighty miracles, but at the same time, He said, I'm not doing this for your benefit. I'm doing it so that you can see how mighty and powerful God is. Jesus, whenever He came to this earth, was holy. He knew no sin. There was no sin in His life. Though people want to try to demoralize Him, they want to try to deflate Him and, 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 and take Him down to a place of humanity and say that He sinned, but the Bible said that He knew no sin. Jesus is holy. He was without sin in his life. Listen to what Hebrews uh, 4 and 15 says. For we have not a high priest which cannot be touched by the feelings of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like we are, yet without sin. sin. No sin ever entered into his life. He was without sin. He abides. He abides in holiness. That is who he is. It is the greatest attribute of God is His holiness. We want to talk about love and preach love. And we should preach love. We want to talk about mercy and preach mercy. And we should preach mercy. We want to talk about all the attributes of God. His long-suffering. And we should preach the long-suffering of God. We should preach all of these things and all of these characteristics. But if I remember correctly what the Bible says, up in the throne of heaven today, they're not crying mercy, mercy, mercy. They're not crying love, love, love. They're not crying peace, peace, peace. But they're crying holy, 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 holy. My Lord. He is a holy God. And he requires people to be holy to worship him. We can't change that. This sin a little bit every day. This idea that you can live in the world and live.
for God at the same time is an impossible philosophy. This idea that you can live in sin and still be a part of the body of Christ is a false philosophy. Amen. But I'm here today to preach to you that this unchanging God that we serve, this unchanging Jesus that came to this world to save us from our sins, the power of his blood is still real today to transform the lives of humanity. It will just trust in the unchanging Christ that we serve. Listen. His love hasn't changed. No, sir. No, sir. Whenever I think about the love of God, the love, He died to prove His love. No greater love hath any man than to lay down His life for His friend. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Right. That whosoever would believe in him would not perish, but would have everlasting life. Can I just tell you that that love has not changed? That love that he gave to this world, it manifests whenever he died on the cross, it manifests his love. It manifests the cleansing of sin. Amen. It manifests to us that there was a God that loved us so much that he would send his son as the sacrifice yes. for the sins of all the world. Amen. His love. His love for us hasn't changed. His love is, can't be separated. Amen. Listen to what the Bible says in Romans 8. Who shall separate us from the love of God? Amen. Shall tribulation of distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? As it is written for thy sake, we are all, we are killed all the day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any creature shall separate us from the love. I want to tell you his love is unchanging. You might separate yourself from God, but you'll never separate yourself from his love. He'll love you while you're in sin. He'll love you while you're backslidden. He'll love you when you go away, but he'll love you when you come home. He'll love you when you're serving. He'll love you when you work for him. Come on, somebody. Jesus loves us, and his love will never change. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Christ, in his power, never changes. He has power over all flesh. Listen, John 17. And thou hast given him power over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as though thou hast given him. There is power. In Jesus Christ. That's it. Amen. That's it. There's power over the flesh in Jesus Christ. My goodness, I could preach there for a while. We want to talk about this sin in theology. Amen. But I want to tell you the Christ that I serve has given me the power to live greater than my flesh. When the desires of this life want to rise up, He has given me. He has given me the ability to live greater than my flesh. He's given me the ability to overcome the flesh of this world. Come on, somebody. Thank you, my friend. Amen. He's given us the ability to stand. He's given us the ability to conquer this world. Amen. He has given us the power to overcome the world. For in John 16 and 33, these things I've spoken of you that in me ye have the peace. In the world ye shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. In Christ Jesus, you can overcome the world. You can overcome your flesh. Amen. And you can have the power to ascend to a place. Amen. That this world can't even describe. John, in his feeble attempt in the book of Revelation, tried to give us a description of it all. Amen. But I want to tell you, heaven is greater than what John saw. I have not seen, ear hath not heard. Amen. It tells me that we cannot imagine what God has prepared 
for us. He's given us the power. The power of God has not diminished. People don't have to go back into sin. No. They don't have to have to go back and live in this world. I understand that there is a world that we live in. And it's a physical world. I understand that there is a human world that we live in. And we have to deal with people. But the world that is referenced here is a sinful world. It's an evil world. Sometimes, just to be honest with you, I don't like dealing with people. That's why we go on vacation. Do me a favor, would you? Would you do me a favor and I'm being all serious? While your pastor is gone this week, try not to call him. Call Brother Bird. Call the, call the other folks. Give him a break. As good as you are. There are days that pastors don't like talking to people. Amen. There's times that I just I, I, I would rather I would rather Judy chop somebody in the throat than I would to, <laughs> for those of you who are Tammy Griffin. But you see, the power of God has given us the ability to deal with things whenever we don't feel like it. And to overcome our own flesh. And to overcome our own desires. There are times, and you must confess, and I confess this morning, that we just want to quit. That we want to give in. We just want to say it'd be a whole lot easier if I wasn't serving God. But He gives us the power. Yes. Through his blood. Yes. To overcome our flesh. To overcome the flesh of others. He gives us power to overcome the world. Yes. Come on, somebody, give him a hand clap of praise this morning. His power has not changed. His power has not diminished. He is not sitting, he's sitting on a different throne this morning. He's still on his throne. He's not somewhere asleep. He's not somewhere disengaged. He is there this morning. And the Bible says that you can cast all of your care upon him. Why? Because he careth for you. He cares about you this morning. And he's got the power to make things happen in your life. Yes, he does. Christ is never changing in his power, but he's never changing in his promises either. Christ doesn't change. He doesn't change his promises. The promise of eternal life is just as real today as it was the day that he died on the cross. John 11 and 25 says this. Jesus saith unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. And he that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. He has the power to change people and to give eternal life. His promise is real today. That you don't have to live eternity in a place that was not designed for you. There are times that you want to look at people and say, do you realize that you're going to hell? And we're quick to say that without giving them the promise that never changes. But you don't have to because you can go to heaven. You see, eternal life hasn't changed. The promise of the Comforter has not changed. Acts chapter 2 and 4 can still be experienced today. Acts chapter 10 can still be experienced today. The moving of the power of God can still be experienced today. It has not diminished. It did not die. I don't believe in cessation theology. I don't believe that there was a time where it was and now it is no more. I believe in the moving and the power of the Holy Ghost and that men and women can be filled with the Spirit, speak in unknown tongues as the Spirit gives the utterance. They can prophesy. They can dream dreams. They can have the fruit of the Spirit. Hey, come on, somebody. I'm telling you, we're living in a day where the promise of the Holy Ghost not changed. May we be a Pentecostal church preaching the Pentecostal power praying in Pentecost and know that there's a God that loved us enough to send another comforter. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. The promise 
He's returned. Yes. Has it changed? Right. Pastor, I appreciate the songs that you sung this morning. God, I appreciate the fact that soon and very soon yes, we're going to see the King. Yes, I know that there's victory in Jesus this morning. I know that there is power. Hallelujah. That's it. I stand today as a living testimony of the power of God. Yes, sir. I stand today to tell you that there is a God that whenever you're going through the darkest times of your life, that he'll never leave you nor forsake you. But there's a greater promise than this, that if we do die in this life, that there is a hope of eternal life with him in heaven. The Bible tells us, he said, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, there you may be also. Somebody help me preach just a little while about heaven. The world doesn't need to know so much about hell. They need to know more about heaven than they do about hell. They need to know that hell is a place that they can escape. And that they can live forever with Jesus Christ our Lord in a place that we call heaven. So we're quick to condemn people to hell. Yes, we are. And we fail to preach them heaven. That's the hope that we have that's given to us in the never changing gospel message. We'll wrap it up here. There's some things that just never change. And it is his gospel, the gospel message. Christ's message is given by the Spirit. Amen. Let me go a little deeper into this this morning. Yes, Lord. We as Spirit-filled individuals, He said, I am going to send the Comforter yes. that you can be a more effective witness. Yes. It takes the Spirit to have an effect on this world. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. Yes. And if you're not being led by the Spirit, you can do more damage than you do. Amen. Amen. But by the Spirit of God, yes. listen to what the Bible says, Revelation 22 and 17, and the Spirit and the bride, who is the bride of Christ? The Spirit and the bride say, Come, and let him that heareth say, Come, and let him that a thirst, Come, and whosoever will, let him take the water of life freely. That is the message that we have for this lost and dying world. Yes. Under the unction and under the power of the Spirit of God, the bride of Christ is to bid this world to come. Yes. And as they come, they invite more to come. Yes. And as they come thirsty, they are filled with a drink that will never run dry. And they are filled. And God will touch them. And they say, come. The message that come this morning has not changed. There is the gospel message that will never change that is extended by the spirit and communicated by the church and if we don't do that the world will die and go to hell but I'm preaching to you this morning that the gospel message has not changed that Jesus Christ is alive and well and that he's still saving them from their sins you see According to Luke 14 and 17, there's a prepared feast. And sent his servant at supper time to say to them that were bidden, Come, for all things are now ready. He has a table spread for those that will come. His invitation is not to a selected few, his invitation is to all. Matthew eleven twenty eight. 28, the Bible says, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Yes. All, all individuals, everybody in this house this morning yes. has an opportunity to know Jesus as Lord and Savior yes. of your life. Yes. All. Yes. Can I just, I told you I was going to conclude a minute ago, but let me just add this. Is that God's ability to save has not changed. We're living in one of the darkest seasons of sin that I've ever witnessed. Oh yeah. The boldness and the blatancy of sin is in your face. You can't turn on the TV without seeing a show or a commercial that promotes sinfulness. 
shows are being created with the idea of appealing to the lust of the flesh. Commercials sell to the lust of the flesh. Come on, We find ourselves in a position that we ask the question, what do we do? Sometimes it's disheartening. Yes, it is. To think that there's a world that's lost and it's like they just don't want to hear. That's right, sorry. But just because they don't want to hear doesn't mean that we have an, a, we can shun our obligation right. to stop right. telling. Right. God has called us to preach yes. that He is the only way. Right. There's not multiple gods. Right. There's not multiple ways. Right. You can't be held up in purgatory. And hope that somebody prays you on up. Come on, somebody. There is only one way. For Jesus said in John 14 and 6. I am the way, the truth, and the life. And no man cometh unto the Father except or but by me. He is the only way. And if we preach anything other than Jesus Christ being the way, the Bible says we are to be accursed. If any man come preaching any other gospel, then let him be accursed. It's Jesus Christ. He is the only one that can save. He is the only person who saves men from their sins. He is the only one who has the ability to save people from their sins. You can slip in a booth, pull the curtain back, and tell somebody your problems and you be forgiven. It takes you talking to Jesus. It takes you coming to the Lord. You can't expect the pastor to pray you through you can't expect a song to get you there it's you talking to Jesus and saying forgive me of my sin and if the world will do this today we can see a great revival like never before preach the gospel church preach the unchanging Christ that will never change no matter what society says musicians would you come There is one thing for sure this morning. I can't tell you what's going to happen tomorrow. I can't tell you what's going to happen the rest of the day. There's one thing that I can I can tell you is that Jesus will never change. God will not be moved from his seated position on the throne. Jesus will not be moved from his right hand as an intercessor for you and I. Today, there may be somebody in this house that you're lost. You may be a backslider. I don't know. I don't know you well enough. I'm not your pastor. But I can tell you that God doesn't change. And in a changing world, there is an unchanging God that you can hold on to. When you don't know if you're going to have a job in the morning, Christ will still be there. When you don't know where you're going to put the next meal on your table at, Christ will still be there. When you don't know if your marriage is going to make it or not, Christ is still going to be there. When you just don't know, there's one thing you can know. is that Jesus will never fail you and you'll never change. I don't know why the Lord put me in this direction to preach this message today. But I believe two things here this morning. That if there is a lost person in this house, that if you will confess Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior of your life, ask for forgiveness of your sins, that you can be saved. Amen. The other thing is I believe that there's a church here this morning that needs to be encouraged. That though that everything around us is shifting, inflation's on the rise, gas prices. Man, I'm going to tell you what. We're living in a time of uncertainty. But this one thing I'm certain of. The Bible said, I have never seen the righteous forsaken. Nor God's seat begging for bread. The last time I checked, I don't operate on Biden's economy. No, sir. No, sir. I don't operate under the laws of the Senate and the House 
And how that they want to raise inflation and they want to cause harm to our nation. I don't operate under that, that kingdom. The kingdom that I operate under is a holy kingdom. And there's nobody can change. Let me tell you something. If we get, ever get to the place that it seems like you can't put on your food on your table, let me guarantee you this one thing. If you'll follow the principles of Scripture, Amen. the Word, Christ was the Word that became flesh and dwelt among us. If you'll follow the Word of God that we've been given, there are principles in here, such as the principle of paying your tithes. If you'll pay your tithes and you stand on the unchanging Christ, the unchanging Word of God, if you stand on the Word of there will always be food on your table. There will always be a means of transportation. Come on, somebody. I'm preaching that he never changes. I will leave this out myself, Brother Ayers. When my wife and I first got married, we didn't have enough money, amen, to pay attention. Amen. We couldn't, we couldn't make change for a dime. We were scraping up money trying to get something to eat. I'm honest with you. I'm not trying to make light of it. Amen. But God always put food on our table. And God always put a roof over our head. God always gave us something to drive. Why? Because we remain faithful to the principles of the Word of God. Whenever you live by the book, amen, you live under a holy economy. You live under a holy kingdom. And it will be more kingdom minded. God will prove himself to us in this last day. Don't you be discouraged, church. Don't worry. Everything's going to be all right. Everything's going to be okay. Amen. We don't have to have steaks on our table to be happy. That's it. That's it. Come on. That's it. We don't have to have the finest of clothes on our back to be happy. There was a day that they left the fields and came straight into the church with their ripped jeans and the rip, they call them dungarees then. And they'd come right into the house of God and it didn't stop their worship. After working in the field all day long. Listen. We can do it. I believe more than ever the trumpet's about the same. There was a discussion. First Thessalonians chapter 4. Between Paul and those that were there in Thessalonica. And they were concerned about the people that had died. They were concerned about the people that had gone on. What's going to happen to them? He said this to them. He said, I would, I would have you not to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep. For we sorrow not. He said, for the Lord himself shall descend from the heaven with a shout. And the voice, the trump of God, the voice of the archangel, the trump of God shall sound. And then we which are alive and remain shall be gathered together with them in the clouds. He said the dead are going to rise first. Those people that you're concerned about, they're going to come out of the ground first. And they're going to be staged up in the air. And then we which are alive and remain shall be gathered together with them in the clouds. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore comfort one another with these words. His comfort was not just to those that they had questions about. His comfort was them knowing that heaven was a reality. It wasn't not the knowledge of what was going to happen to them. But the comfort was knowing that one day the church is going to leave this place. This old world that sees death over and over and over. Church, I want to tell you, we've got a hope greater than this world. Hold on to heaven. Heaven is soon to be a reality. Would you stand with me? Would you bow your heads with me? Father, in the name of Jesus, I come before you. And I ask you, Lord, that in the midst of this house this morning, God, that if there is one that does not know you as Lord and Savior of, your life, of their life, if they don't know you as Jesus, as Lord, and they don't serve you. God, I'm asking you right now that by your spirit you would convict them and draw them. That you would convict them so deeply of their sin that they would come and repent. There's a hope. 
Lord, I'm asking you that you would draw them by your spirit. I've communicated your word. I've communicated the hope and the promise of eternal life. As feeble as it is, God, take it and put it in somebody's heart this morning to encourage them to leave the life of sin and to follow the Savior. To encourage them, God, to go and sin no more. So, Lord, if that person is here this morning, I pray you draw them to this altar. That they would come and serve you. I'm going to pause here just a moment while every head's bowed and all our eyes are closed. We're praying as saints of God. If there's somebody here this morning you don't know Jesus as Lord and Savior, would you step from where you are? Come and meet me in this altar and let me pray with you. If you're not serving the Lord with all your heart, your mind, and your soul, would you step out and come as an act of faith, as trusting in God? Make your way to this altar this morning. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. We bless you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody else. Somebody else. Come on. It's an opportunity for you to pray. It's an opportunity for you to come. In Jesus' name. Why don't you come? Make that declaration this morning. I'm going to serve him. I'm going to serve him with all of my heart. I'm going to leave sin behind. And I'm going to do everything that I can to live right and holy before a holy God. Come on, make your way. I'm going to tell you here just a moment. This is the most important part of this service. There's nothing greater that happens outside of this. Come on, would you come this morning? Sinner, backslider, would you come home? In Jesus' name. Now I want to ask you, church, are you here this morning and you've been discouraged? You've been down? You've been questioning things? You've been wondering how much more do we have to take? How much longer do we have to be here? Can I tell you that in the midst of it all, Jesus hasn't changed. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. There's a place for you in this altar if you want to come. There's a place here today if you want to come and talk to the Lord about it all. I would invite you. I would encourage you. Everybody in this house that wants to find a place to pray, let's find somewhere. Maybe in your seat, maybe around this altar. Let's talk to God just for a little bit. Let's express our heart to Him. Let Him know how much we love Him. Let Him know that we trust in Him. That no matter what's going wrong in our lives, that He's still the same. He's still on His throne this morning. He's still mediator between God and man. Come on, somebody. Come on, let's fill this altar this morning and talk to Jesus. Amen. Find you a place to pray right there where you are as they play the music softly this morning. Oh, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus.
Bible says they received the word with gladness. Amen. Amen. Gladness. That means we love to hear it. Amen. We don't know what tomorrow holds, but we know who holds tomorrow. And in a changing world, he still has an unchanging hand. How many believe that? I still wish some of you would smile. Amen. Say, well, preacher, you don't know what I'm going through. No, I don't. But I know one who does. And I know one who can do something about it. Amen. Hallelujah. Do you love the Lord today? Amen. Praise the Lord. My wife is coming. She must have something to say. Everybody say August 20th. August 20th. All right. I want to thank everybody who has donated school supplies. We've been packing backpacks. Thank you, Miss Debbie and Cindy. I've been in the back. They've been packing backpacks. Yep. But we need you to be in prayer because this is not just a backpack giveaway. This is an opportunity for us to communicate with our, to connect with our community and to win souls for Christ. We're going to have music. We're going to have free food. We're going to give away backpacks. We're going to have those backpacks prayed over. And we're going to be there to be a resource and a connection to Christ. So I need you to be praying. I need you to be hungry and show up. If you haven't already brought your backpacks, bring them in. And um, if you have people in your communities, in your neighborhoods that you know, we would like to specifically tag book bags for people with their names on so we can pray individually and specifically yeah. for those families. So if you have people that you know are coming or that are in need of a book bag and maybe they can't make it, you let us know. We'll pack a backpack for that kid and we will pray over it and pray for that family and we're believing God for, for souls. Amen? Yes. Amen. Yes. Hey, listen. We've already had some that's been that's been connecting with my wife and saying, you know, my child needs a book bag. They've seen the ad on Facebook. I'm telling you, God is up to something. I want to commend you too. Uh, we sent, I don't know, Cole's truck, bless his heart, that little Ford Ranger. I'm not sure how much more of that thing. That thing's brand new, but it sure was loaded down. The rear end on that thing looked bad. He left here on Thursday. But I tell you, it was packed down with water uh, and all kinds of supplies. And he and Ashland took them to Danville, Virginia, where that I guess a station was. And they took our name along with others. And then they shipped them to Kentucky and West Virginia. I think all of that that's up in there that's flooded. So I want to commend you, yes. amen, for giving. What does the Bible say? Give and it what? Yes. Shall be given. Good measure, pressed together, shaking yes. together. And running over shall men give unto your bosom. I want to tell you, I've seen that operation in my life. I, it's like Bishop Gunner. I've seen the times you couldn't rub two pennies together. But I have always seen the hand of God as I've been faithful unto him. And he has supplied the All right, on top of that, this week we had, uh, and I'll let you go in just a minute. We're still going to beat the Baptist to the seafood place, so don't worry about it. Uh, but... We, um, our, our, our uh, website went down this week for whatever reason, uh, so we have just discontinued that one and started up a brand new one, and you can go to www.kinglivingwaters.org, .org, and Cole is working on that. He's got it. He's getting it up, and uh, you can give on that site. It is a secure site. And uh, he's already putting sermons on that site, so you can go there and watch the sermons too. So God is blessing. Look, 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 look at somebody say, God is blessing. God is blessing. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. I refuse Amen. to live in Egypt, which is the land of not enough. I refuse to live in the land of Canaan, uh, or the wilderness, excuse me, which is the land of just enough. I'm living in Canaan when yeah. he's a God of more than enough. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. God bless you today. How many enjoyed Bishop Gunner? Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Continue to pray for he and his lovely family. And I, too, am going to be grandpa. Uh, it'll probably be around February or March, um, and Ashlyn is going to kill me, but it'll be all right. I'm not. I'm not scared. I'm not scared. Um, but they are expecting, and uh, so they. Amen. Somebody clap for him. 
And I'll tell you this real quick. Uh, my wife said, what would you like to be called? She said, I think you need to be called G-Daddy. <laughs> Leave it to my bunch, I'll tell you that. Amen. I said, well, what are you going to be called? She said, GG. I said, okay. So I'm excited about it too. Yeah. I'm excited. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. I told Dr. Bill that day, he said, well, get ready to open up your pocketbooks all I can. Amen. God is good. Do you love the Lord? Yes. Amen. Do you love your church? Yes. Do you love your pastor? Amen. Amen. I love you. God bless you. Don't forget, no service tonight, but Wednesday night we will have service and Brother Willie is going to be preaching. God bless you. Shake hands and be friendly. Amen.